on this edition of Airwaves, it's the start of a new era of aviation. An unmanned aircraft meets a modern aircraft carrier for the first time. Plus, military members and engineers work together to improve products for the fleet. And Knock AD celebrates contributions to naval aviation at this year's Commander's Awards. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Lauren Prue. The Navy launched into the future with the first land-based catapult shot of the X-47B unmanned combat air system. The inaugural flight from NAS Patuxent River is an important step in preparing the demonstrator for the fleet. It proves the aircraft can structurally handle launching from an aircraft carrier. The Navy will use the X-47B to demonstrate the first carrier-based launches and recoveries by an autonomous unmanned aircraft in 2013. Just days before the first catapult launch, a second X-47B made its mark on naval aviation history. The unmanned aircraft was hoisted aboard USS Harry S. Truman, signaling the start of carrier-based testing. An exciting moment in naval aviation history as aircraft carrier USS Harry S. Truman welcomed aboard the X-47 Bravo unmanned combat air system. This is a very significant moment in the program because uh, this is the first time that X-47B meets uh, the operational fleet. Anticipation was high as a crane lowered the aircraft onto the flight deck. It's touched down for ever-changing carrier capabilities at sea. Because unmanned aircraft just bring another uh, facet to naval aviation uh, that, that we don't have currently on an aircraft carrier. We're going to demonstrate that an unmanned aircraft can be put on an aircraft carrier, can operate on the flight deck, uh, can fly around in the carrier airspace and demonstrate that, that technology is a viable technology that the Navy can pursue in the future for unmanned uh, to expand the, uh, the battle group's abilities. The Truman is the first modern aircraft carrier to host and operate an unmanned air vehicle. After months of preparation, crew members say they're eager to see the challenges and opportunities X-47 brings to the fleet. I'm excited because in 24 years I've never seen an unmanned aerial, aerial vehicle. It's new technology. Uh, I like the concept. I'm anxious to see it and it just it's going to be fun uh, testing this thing and, and I hope to, to get the opportunity to launch it uh, when, when we are done testing it here on board the, the ship. Test teams from Patuxent River will work with the crew of the Truman to conduct tests aboard and at sea in preparation for carrier landing scheduled for 2013. If you would like to learn more about the X-47B, visit the NAVAIR news page at www.navair.navy.mil forward slash news. Celebrating a year of innovation and achievement, Rear Admiral Randy Marr presented this year's Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division Commander's Awards. The ceremony recognizes accomplishments of military, civilians, and contractors at NAS Patuxent River, Lakehurst, New Jersey, and Orlando, Florida. Rear Admiral Marr presented 19 team awards and two individual awards, congratulating each of the winners for their contribution to the NAVAIR mission. To the programs, to the ideas, to the hard work, to the long hours, um, you've earned every bit of the recognition today. You've earned all the honors that are going to come your way in the future. And it's been my pleasure to, uh, to be part of the NOC AD team. This was Rear Admiral Marr's last ceremony as NOC AD commander. He's now serving as Deputy Program Executive Officer of the Joint Strike Fighter Program. Rear Admiral Mark Dara assumed command of NOC AD. Improving products to better meet the needs of the fleet. The NAVAIR Mission Systems Team at Patuxent River prepares assets for flight and ground testing. Using feedback from the Navy and Marine Corps, engineers test product upgrades on systems already employed by the fleet. The Shared Reconnaissance Pod is a long-range sensor used for imagery collection on multiple aircraft. An upgrade to SHARP will allow pilots to send real-time imaging through a data link to troops on the ground. Through the use of fiber optic transceivers, we were able to data link from here in the lab uh, carry that uh, RF to fiber uh, connection out to uh, this shipboard aviation interoperability lab and test that data link functionality um, before we ever loaded on the aircraft and went in flow. That saved uh, the potential for uh, it not working during the testing. Uh, everything had been tested fully end to end prior to going out to, to flying that flight. Mission Systems is also preparing the shared reconnaissance pod for integration with the EA-18G. And that's it for this edition of Airwaves. See you on the flight line.